Hello and good morning friends welcome to CEC live lectures dear friends today in this session we would be talking in our series on human resource management and under the series we would be discussing on labor welfare and for this discussion we have once again with us in our studios Mr Amuk Talan Mr Amuk Talan is assistant professor in department of commerce college of vocational studies delhi university dear friends if you want to ask questions from mr amuk talan then you can call right in the studio in the last 10 minutes of the lecture you are requested to talk to us through our toll free number our number is 18001010430 i repeat our number is 18001010430 so let's welcome our guest mr muktalan and let's try to discuss and let's try to grab more and more information on the topic labor welfare hello sir welcome to the lecture In today's lecture, we are going to talk about an important aspect of labor welfare through Factories Act, 1948. Labor welfare is the responsibility, an integral responsibility of Human Resource Management Department of uh, any organization. Uh, in order to maintain labor welfare, uh, there are certain activities, certain rules, certain legislations which uh, a Human Resource Department can formulate. Uh, however, more than just the integral rules etc that uh, human resource department decides or may decide to formulate government also takes care of the uh, welfare aspect of all the organizations through its legislations uh, and one of the important legislations passed by the government regarding the labor welfare is factories act 1948 uh, as i said human resource department of any organization can formulate their own rules policies etc which could be implemented in their own organization uh, and those standards uh, are kept by the human resource department and uh, it is responsible to maintain those standards uh, however there are certain minimum standards which are to be met uh, by the human resource department uh, and these minimum standards are set by the government Uh, through its own legislations out of uh, of which this factories act 1948 is one of them other uh, acts regarding the labor welfare which the uh, government decides to enact could be like maternity act or the pension scheme or uh, any other like gratuity act these kind of acts ensure the minimum standards of the government are implemented in all the organizations so from this it is clear that the human resource departments are responsible not only uh, to maintain the minimum standards laid by uh, the government through its own legislations uh, it can formulate its own rules and policies over and above however the requirement of meeting the minimum standards of the government uh, is legally obligatory in case the government uh, in case the organization or the human resource department fails to meet these standards uh, it can be prosecuted in the court of law for not meeting the Uh, these requirements so for this let us start with uh, one of the as i said one of the uh, most important legislations factories act 1948 uh, in this we are going to study certain definitions in this factories act uh, as the definitions uh, in law can vary from uh, one act to another so these uh, these definitions are uh, specific to this particular act Uh, and would apply in uh, this only in order to understand this act it is necessary to understand these definitions after this we are going to discuss the uh, sections of this act one by one regarding labor welfare safety and health of the uh, employees so in this uh, factories act the definition of a factory it means a premises where on 10 or more persons are engaged if power is used or 20 or more persons are engaged if power is not used in a manufacturing process so uh, this says that uh, these minimum requirement as i said government lays the minimum requirement and human resource department is supposed to meet these minimum requirements of labor welfare and 
these minimum requirement however would apply to only certain organization and not all the organizations and in case of a manufacturing as it says this act says manufacturing organization if the manufacturing is done uh, through automation through machinery etc that is it, it is using the power uh, electricity if that is the case and the organization employs more than 10 people then all the acts of factories act 1948 will app uh, will apply to that organization in case it's a cottage industry it, it's not employing uh, the uh, the use of power in it and the employees uh, are basically it, it's a manual labor kind of organization basically the traditional cottage industries etc and the number of employees exceed 20 in that case uh, this law would apply that is if the number of employees in that is lesser than 20 say it's 15 or something if it's a manual labor type industry uh, then the requirements of minimum requirements of factories that 1948 are not obligatory to be met by the human resources department of that particular organization then the objectives of the act uh, this factories act 1948 has been enacted primarily with the object of protecting workers employed in factories against industrial and occupational hazards for that purpose it seeks to improve upon the owner or the occupier certain obligations to protect the workers and to secure for them employment in conditions conducive to their health and safety this act contains two parts one is health and another is safety uh, up to section section 20 it concerns about the health beyond that it concerns the rest of the sections are concerned about the safety of the employees so basically in order to keep uh, the employees safe in environment where they are working usually in conditions which may be hazardous to them not just uh, in form of maybe uh, the machinery uh, but maybe in form of even in cottage industries the inhalation the fumes and the temperature conditions etc could be hazardous for employees in long term so that's why the uh, the objective of this act is to ensure the safety of such employees uh, now applicability of this act uh, where would this act be applicable uh, the minimum requirements that is at any place wherein manufacturing process is carried on with or without the aid of power or is so ordinarily carried out uh, notwithstanding that uh, the number of persons employed therein less than 10 if working with the aid of power and less than 20 if working without the aid of power or the persons working therein are not employed by the owner thereof but are working with the permission of or under agreement with such owner so basically these are the kind of organization uh, wherein the manufacturing should be taking place and without if it's without power then up to uh, more than 20 employees and if it's uh, the organization with power then 10 or more employees if it's employing then this the conditions of the act have to be met by that particular factory or the uh, manufacturing organization so according to this again the definition of as i said one of the definition which we covered is the factories next definition is the manufacturing process now uh, this factories act what does it uh, when it says about manufacturing process what does it mean <coughs> so manufacturing process means any process for making altering repairing ornamenting finishing packing oiling washing cleaning breaking up uh, demolishing or otherwise treating or adapted any article or substance with a view to its use sale transport or delivery or disposal uh, then pumping oil water sewage or any other substances or generating transforming and transmitting power or composing types of printing printing by letter press uh, lithography photography or other similar process or book binding then construction reconstruction repairing refitting finishing or breaking up ships or vessels and finally preserving or storing any article in cold storage so if it's me meeting these requirements uh, then the manufacturing process uh, would be considered to be uh, 
undertaken by the manufacturing organization and the requirements of this act would have to be met. Then the definition of the worker, worker is a person employed in any work, uh, manufacturing process or cleaning or any work incidental to manufacturing process. Uh, also a person employed directly or by or through any agency with or without knowledge of the principal employer. Uh, whether for remuneration or not, uh, relationship of master and servant has to be met. So basically, when an employee is undertaking the manufacturing process, whether he is collecting remuneration or not, but the relationship of a master and servant is established in the organization, then uh, this, uh, the conditions of this act would apply on that particular worker. Uh, then. Uh, again, few of the definitions. Adult in this act means a person who has completed his 18th year of age. Adolescent means a person who has completed his 15th year of age but has not completed his 18th year. Uh, child means a person who has not completed his 15th year of age. And young person means a person who is either a child or an adolescent. Then day uh, means a period of 24 hours beginning at midnight. Week means a period of 7 days beginning midnight on Saturday night. A calendar year means the period of 12 months beginning with the first day of January uh, each year. Uh, power means uh, electrical energy or any other form of energy which is mecha mechanically transmitted and is not generated by human or animal agency. Uh, prime mover means any engine, motor or other appliance uh, which generate or otherwise provides the power. Uh, then the occupier, the person who has unlimited control over the affairs of the factory. It includes the partners in case of firm and director in case of company. In case of government company, occupier need not be a director. Uh, in that case, person appointed to manage affairs of the factory shall be the occupier, in other words, the manager of the company. Uh, then approval, uh, licensing and registration of factories. Now making an application, uh, now there are certain procedures in order to establish the factories where this uh, act would uh, apply. In this, first of all, approval, license and registration is necessary, only then the conditions of this act would be valid considered valid, otherwise no contract uh, or legal obligation would be established for that particular organization. Uh, then there are certain duties of the occupier, that is the employer, occupier basically means the employer, uh, where the occupier shall ensure the health, safety and welfare of all workers while they are at work in the factory. Uh, every occupier shall prepare a written statement of his general policy with respect to health and safety of the workers and bring such statement and revision thereof to the notice of the workers. Uh, and then the duties of the inspection staff, uh, state government may appoint chief inspector, additional chief inspector, joint chief inspectors, deputy chief inspector and inspectors, uh, prescribe their duties and qualification and every district magistrate shall be an inspector for his district. Every inspector is deemed to be a public servant within the meaning of the Indian Penal Code. Uh, now the powers of the inspectors. Inspectors are basically the persons in the organization under the Human Resources Department who are responsible to ensure the uh, requirements of this Factories Act or any other act uh, enacted by the government. Uh, so basically the powers of the uh, inspector, uh, he can enter factory premises for investigation, examine the premises, uh, inquire into any accident or dangerous uh, uh, occurrence, uh, require the production of any prescribed register or document, seize or take copies uh, of any register, record or other document, take measurements, photographs and make such recordings. Uh, exercise such other powers as may be prescribed and no person shall be compelled under the section to answer any question or give any evidence uh, tending to incriminate himself. Uh, then 
uh, health provisions. Now, Chapter 3 of Factories Act contain details regarding health of the workers. So, we are going to start with these. These are first, as I said, there are two parts of this section, health and safety. Section 11 to 20, these pertain to the health and beyond 20 are regarding the safety. So, uh, st starting with section 11, uh, cleanliness. Uh, the working conditions should be clean and safe. Uh, clean the floor at least once a week by washing or by some effective method. Uh, effective means of drainage shall be provided. Whitewash should be held every 14 weeks and paint and varnish should be held every uh, 5 years. So, these conditions, if they, if it is proven that any of these conditions are not met by the factory, then factory may be liable uh, for the prosecution and it may be fined for that and the inspector may uh, even suspend the license of the factory and steps may be taken against it. So, all these provisions, all these acts, uh, these sections under this Factories Act 1940, the provisions of these sections have to be met by the uh, factory and the inspector is liable to check these uh, whether these conditions are being met from time to time uh, through his regular inspections. Then section 12 regarding disposal of waste and effluents. Uh, there should be a proper arrangement or disposal of waste and effluent uh, and basically the state government is empowered to establish any rules and regulations regarding disposals of waste and effluent. Uh, so basically uh, you will see this in uh, all the uh, sections of this Factories Act 1948 that state government is empowered uh, to formulate and extend the powers of this Factories Act 1948 and add certain sections and requirements to it. Uh, so basically this, uh, uh, this act uh, is a responsibility of the state government and state government is responsible to add certain provisions according to the conditions of that particular state. It, this Factories Act 1948 is very flexible and as I said, the state government are responsible uh, for adding the rules etc. And that is done so that because the diversity of uh, uh, in the India, the geographical diversity, the requirements changes from state to state. So, according to the uh, geographical conditions, according to the political conditions of this uh, state, the state government can uh, maintain the minimum standards and implement them through this act. Then uh, regarding section 13, ventilation and temperature. Uh, proper level of ventilation, temperature and humidity must be maintained and uh, state government again can make uh, provisions for reducing excess heat. Then section 11, uh, section 14, sorry, uh, regarding dust and fumes uh, which says effective measure should be taken to prevent inhalation or accumulation of dust and fumes. And if any exhaust appliance is necessary for, it shall be applied as near as possible to the point of origin of the dust, fume or other impurity. Then section 15 is about art, uh, artificial humification. Factories in which uh, the humidity of the air is artificially increased like in textile units, uh, there has to be limits uh, which uh, have to be set for that particular humification. The water used for artificial humification to be clean, uh, especially uh, for certain industries, cotton industries, etc. Uh, in order to improve the uh, quality of the products, the humidity is maintained uh, in the factory. So, the, if the environment is too dry, then the cotton produce or the textile, etc., the uh, quality may decrease. So, uh, for that the factories try to increase humidity as much as possible. However, as you may be aware, they, India obviously being a tropical country and uh, the temperature are usually in most of the states are usually high and if the uh, humidity is artificially increased over and above what is already there, uh, then the conditions may become very unbearable for the workers or the labor in that uh, factory. So, for that uh, the humification can be done in order to maintain the 
uh, quality of the product. However, it should not be done beyond a certain level. Again, that level, uh, that minimum requirement is set by the state government only because it depends from the state to state, temperature to temperature. If there is a state in which the temperature are uh, very less, so say for example, uh, some of the northern state or the northeastern state, there the humidity requirement may be relaxed a bit and uh, artificial humification over and above uh, a certain level may be allowed uh, compared to any other uh, uh, state uh, in the uh, say compared to South India uh, where the temperature are usually high. So that depends from state to state again state government is empowered to lay the minimum requirement of the humification. And again, the humification, the water required to humify the environment that has to be properly clean. Then section 16 is regarding overcrowding, which says 14.2 cubic meter space should be allowed per worker in the factory. While calculating the space, the space above the worker beyond 4.2 meters shall not be taken into account. And notice specifying the maximum number of workers which can be employed in any work room shall be displayed in the premises. So basically, the organization cannot employ as many workers as possible uh, because you know that overcrowding that causes uh, uh, increases the risk of the accidents and also uh, the inconvenience of the employees working there increases with the number of employees. So uh, there has to be there are certain restrictions set that for every worker 14.2 cubic meters of space ha have to be there in the factory. So entire surface area uh, uh, area of the factory is calculated and uh, then that is divided by the number of employees hired by that factory. And if that uh, area is lesser than 14.2 cubic uh, meter, uh, then uh, the factory would not be allowed to uh, employ all those employees and lesser number of employees would be recommended by the state government to be employed until the area requirement of 14.2 cubic meter or more is met per employee employed. Then section 17 regarding lighting, sufficient and suitable lighting in every part of the factory should be there. There should be natural lighting as far as possible. Uh, then all glazed windows and skylights used for the lighting of the workroom shall be kept clean. Uh, and formation of shadows to such an extent as to uh, cause eye strain or the risk of accident to any worker shall be prevented. So for, for that, like uh, you must have already uh, experienced it also that certain uh, lighting conditions have to be met by uh, for the workers in order to reduce the inconvenience, say welding workers, etc., where the lighting condition, the light, etc., emitted from the welding process uh, could be so much that it may damage their eyes in long term. So for that, the state government again is empowered to lay down under this Factories Act 1948 to certain provisions which... Uh, say for example, they need to keep uh, certain eyeglasses which prevents UV rays from entering their eyes and damaging them. Uh, so, and natural lighting is emphasized by this act in order to reduce the power wastage of the by the organization. Then section 18 is regarding drinking water. There should be drinking water uh, in every uh, factory premises and drinking points to be marked as drinking water uh, these markers should be there and they should be at least 6 meters away from the washrooms or uh, urinals, pitons, etc. If there are greater than 250 workers in the factory, then uh, there have to be cool water facility maintained also. So, uh, again, the hygiene uh, is one of the focus of this uh, particular section drinking water that there has to be drinking water and it has to be at an appropriate distance from the uh, toilets, washrooms, etc. And if there are uh, over 250 workers, then the water cooling system should also be employed in that particular factory. 
then toilets and urinals regarding section eight, uh, 19 there should be separate toilets for male and female employees and proper cleaning should be maintained for these uh, facilities then section 20 is regarding spitons which says uh, there should be sufficient number of spitons uh, and no person shall spit within the premises of a factory except in the spitons provided for the particular purpose uh, whoever spits in the contravention shall be punishable with fine not exceeding uh, 5 rupees. Uh, again, these certain requirements uh, can be put by the state government. They may add certain sections uh, or the provisions within these particular sections of Factories Act and increase, usually state governments do increase the requirements over and above the uh, stated uh, requirements by the Factories Act 1948. The reason for that is that 1948 uh, that was long time ago and certain requirements are not uh, according to the current scenario and certain fines, the amount of fines, etc. Even they do not match up with the current economic scenario. Hence, the state government from time to time, they uh, modify that and they set their own parameters, uh, increasing the certain requirements and certain uh, fines, etc. mentioned in the original act. Then section 21 to 41 regarding safety of the worker. So till now for section 11 to 20 we studied about uh, the health of the workers. Now section uh, 21 to 41 are regarding the safety. Then section 21 is regarding the fencing of the machinery. Every dangerous part of the machinery must be securely uh, fenced. State government may by rules prescribe such further uh, precautions again uh, with this we are going to discuss more into the uh, safety provisions provided by factories act 1948 and we would like to take a short break here thank you <laughs> Welcome back friends. 
uh, before the break we were discussing about certain sections of factories act 1948 which ensure the health and welfare of the labor working in a factory uh, we discussed section 11 to 20 uh, regarding the health of the workers and how factories act 1948 along with the state government provisions help to ensure the health of the workers uh, working on a factory or a production factory uh then section 21 to 40 uh, re- are regarding the safety of the workers which we are going to discuss section 21 uh i started with this fencing of the machinery which says that every dangerous part of the machinery shall be securely fenced and the state government may prescribe further precautions as i said earlier state government is uh permitted to add any provisions in any of the sections uh, of the factories act 1948 in order to keep up to the date Uh, with the current scenario and fr- uh, from varying conditions from state to state section 22 of this factories act uh, is regarding machines in motions and says that examination of machinery in motion uh, should only be uh, taken care by a specially trained adult male worker wearing uh, tight fitting clothes and no women or child should be allowed to work near the machinery in motion so basically when the uh, in order to uh, maintain the conditions of the machinery when a person is permitted to uh, go there and uh, maintain the machine first of all he needs to be expert of that particular machine secondly he must be wearing protective clothing and tight clothing so that Uh, he does not get affected by the moving parts of the machine and does not get involved in any form of accident or the chances of accident uh, gets reduced uh, secondly no women and child shall be allowed to work because of the hazardous conditions uh, and the re- uh, increased risk of accidents uh, in a moving machinery then section 23 is regarding employment of young persons uh, on dangerous machines Uh, no young person should be allowed to work on dangerous machine unless he has been trained uh, and is under supervision again as i said earlier young person means 14 to 18 years of age uh, so uh, again state government usually set up certain provisions and it uh, may usually exclude uh, even young persons from working Uh, on dangerous machines and only the adults would be allowed to work on certain machines where the risk of accident is high uh, then section 24 is regarding striking gears uh, which says there should be suitable stri- uh, striking gears etc to switch off the power so that if there is any emergency problem can be solved and these switch off powers for the buttons in case of accident should be Uh, in arms reach of the person employed in the uh, with the machinery so that he is able to turn off the machine in case there is any uh, accident or any potential uh, accident that may take sp- uh, that may take place from the machinery and section 25 regarding self acting machine uh, machines which says may uh, the factory should make sure that no person should walk in a space within 45 cm Uh, from any fixed structure which is not a part of the machine uh, then section 26 uh, is regarding casing of the new machinery which says all machinery driven by the power and installed should be so sunk uh, and cased and otherwise uh, effectively guarded as to prevent uh, danger then section 27 are regarding cotton operators which says no women and children are allowed to work on cotton operator basically cotton operating that system uh, in our traditional uh, cottage industry uh, that kind of uh, processes the cotton processes uh, are hazardous for the health uh, of individual and especially women and children are most susceptible to it Uh, so basically when you are working on a cotton plant and when you open the pod of the cotton there are certain fumes that are emitted from that pod and those uh, microscopic material that may come out of the uh, uh, the pod of the cotton uh, gets inhaled by the persons working and it may get stuck in the uh, lungs and may cause various lung problems and diseases such as bronchitis or even uh, asthma and cancer and 
women and children are especially more vulnerable to it and even for the adults working uh, as cotton operators uh, even though this is the minimum requirement laid down by this act the state government adds that certain uh, safeguards are to be taken by the adults uh, males also uh, wherein they would be required to wear certain protective masks in order to exclude any sort of inhalation from those cotton plants then section 28 uh, is regarding hoists and lifts which says every hoist and lift uh, should be in good condition and properly checked and the maximum load it can carry must be clearly mentioned uh, the gates should be locked by interlocking safe method uh, and uh, the hoist and lift should be examined in every six months in order to avoid any chance of uh, accident or wear and tear. Uh, then section 29 is regarding lifting machines, chains, ropes and lifting uh, tackles which says the cranes and lifting machines etc. Uh, should be uh, of good construction and be examined every once every 12 months and the cranes and lifting machines uh, not to be loaded beyond safe working load uh, cranes uh, not to be approached uh, within 6 meters of a, a place where any person is employed or working in order to reduce the chances of accidents then section 30 uh, is regarding revolving machinery in which maximum safe, safe speed must be mentioned for each machine and speed indicated in notices should not be uh, exceeded again these kind of requirement the maximum speed etc can be modified and set by the state government then section 20 regarding pressure plants which says there should be safe working pressure on pressure plants and effective measures uh, should be taken to ensure that the safe working pressure is not exceeded Section 32 is regarding floors, stairs, etc., which says all floors, stairs, steps, passages, and gateways should be of sound construction and properly uh, mentioned. So there should be signs, etc., in order to uh, designate the uh, stairs and the steps and the exits. Then section 33 is regarding pits, sumps, openings in the floor, etc., pits, etc should be securely covered or fenced uh, then section 34 is regarding excessive weights which says no person should be employed to host to hold more weight than the person can hold uh, then section 35 is regarding protection of eye provide goggles if the workers have to work on something uh, stretching to the eyes as i said certain uh, professions like welding etc may be hazardous to the eyes and uh, they may be they, they are required in order for their protection to wear certain uh, gears or the goggles etc uh, to avoid uh, the fragments of the welding or the light entering their eyes and damaging them then section 36 is regarding dangerous fumes etc which says uh, which prohibit uh, uh, the factories act 1948 prohibited to employ workers in places where dangerous gas fumes is present and predictable measures should be taken for removal of gas fumes etc uh, as you may be aware that certain incidents especially in new delhi in last month we had seen that there were two incidents taken place uh, within a matter of few days where certain employees stepped in the sewage system and uh, due to the noxious gases present they died uh, now these kind of noxious gases can build up in any kind of facility that has been closed for a long period of time uh, or the enclosed spaces uh, and when someone is stepping them inside them uh, for after a long period of time the oxygen in that place may be completely exhausted and may be replaced by certain dangerous gases like carbon monoxide etc and uh, uh, that could be hazardous and even co uh, c can cause even the death for so, uh, such employees. So uh, regarding that uh, the employees are not supposed to step in such a place and close space etc. unless all the gases have been extracted through the use of pumps. Then uh, section 36A says portable uh, electric light which it should not be above 24 volts in order to not cause any strain to the eyes and section 37 
uh, says regarding explosive of in or inflammable dust or gases uh, where take all measures for safety and to prevent explosion or ignition of gas fumes and dust etc uh, then section 38 is regarding the precautions in case of fire which says there should be separate exit for the cases of fire and there should be facilities for extinguishing uh, fire so the proper exits uh, in case of fire uh, they should be properly marked in bold letters and the direction for the uh, fire exit should be given and the uh, fire extinguisher should be installed uh, within the arms reach of the employees from one place uh, to another depending on the rooms uh, and the conditions uh, where the incident of fire may be more in certain places uh, more extinguisher should be installed. Section 39 and 40 are regarding role of the inspector. Section 39, 40 and 40A talk about various roles that have been assigned to the inspector. Uh, he may call for details regarding building and machinery etc. Uh, and section 40B is regarding safety officers uh, which says if 1000 or more workers are employed, uh, there has to be a safety officer which would be the integral person of the factory and an employee of the factory unlike the inspector. Uh, should be employed in that particular factory. Section 41 now, uh, it regards, uh, it is regarding the power to make rules to supplement the above provisions. As I said, the state government has more power regarding the setting up of rules uh, according to the conditions of the state. The state government may make rules requiring the provision in any factory of such further devices and measures for securing the safety of persons employed therein uh, as it may deem necessary. Then section 42 and uh, up to 50, they regard uh, the welfare provisions of the employees. Now uh, before this we had two, uh, health, safety and now the third part, the welfare uh, of the employees are covered by for section 42 to section 50. Uh, there are a number of provisions in the factories that regarding welfare uh, facilities for the worker. Uh, the brief introduction of these welfare issues we can see section 42 says uh, is regarding washing facilities. Uh, then section 43 is regarding uh, facilities for storing and dyeing clothes. Section 44 is regarding facilities for sitting. Section 45 are regarding uh, first aid appliances. Section 46 are regarding the canteen, section 47 are regarding restrooms, shelters and lunch rooms, section 48 are regarding crutches, section 49 are regarding welfare officer and section 50 is regard uh, to power to make rules by the state government. Now starting with this section 42 which says uh, washing facilities, under this section there should be washing facility in every factory for the workers separate for male and female uh, employees uh, and uh, conveniently accessible and shall be kept clean. So basically uh, employees who are working in a factory for a long period of time may need to, especially if it's a manufacturing uh, unit and uh, where uh, they, are, they are bound to get their clothes dirty, uh, there should be facility to clo clean their clothes every now and then after they get dirty. And there has to be separate clean facilities for separately for males and females which have to be properly separated. Then section 43 is regarding the facility to uh, for storing and dyeing of clothing uh, which says there should be a facility so that worker can place their clothes not worn during the manufacturing process and there should be facility so that the worker can dry their wet clothes. Then section 44 is regarding facilities for sitting. Uh, we say suitable arrangements for sitting shall be provided and maintained for all workers obliged to work in a standing position. Uh, if a worker can do any work by sitting, there should be sitting arrangements for the worker. So when a worker is working in a factory for too long, certain processes may be uh, may require a worker to stand for hours at a time and there has to be proper facilities. Uh, for that person to take rest and sit after certain number of hours 
so as to not to cause any injury to that person. Then section 45 is regarding first aid appliances which says there should be at least one first aid box for every 150 workers employed and it should have uh, the prescribed contents. Again these prescribed contents would be decided by the state government. A responsible person should hold a certificate on first aid treatment, uh, basically the nurse who is employed in the factory and an ambulance room should be there if the number of workers is more than 500. Then uh, section 46 is regarding the canteen. If the number of workers is more than 250, the government may make rules for the canteen. Uh, again, this is the discretion of the government whether it wants to, the state government whether it wants to uh, set certain requirements. The government may make rules regarding foodstuff construction, furniture, equipments of the canteen. So, over and above 250 employees, the factory is needed to keep uh, a canteen maintained and proper food should be served to the uh, employees regarding the requirements of the state and the state government may put certain uh, requirements regarding the furniture, sitting conditions and uh, certain other conditions, the hygiene etc. Uh, these requirements can be laid down by the state government. Then section 47 is regarding shelter, restroom, lunch room uh, which says when 150 workers are working there should be restrooms, lunch rooms etc. and such places should be uh, having drinking water facilities also. So over and above 150 workers, then the, uh, the factory would be required to employ uh, restrooms facilities and the lunchroom facilities. Then section 48 is regarding crutches, uh, which says if the number of women workers is more than 30 in the factory, there should be crutches uh, and it should be sufficiently lighted, ventilated and to be under charge of trained uh, women. So these facilities have to be provided in every facilities where the women workers exceed 30, so that they can they are require uh, they are permitted to uh, carry their young uh, children with them, where they can be kept in uh, the situation where the mother is working uh, in the factory, and the uh, employees in that crutches should be trained women who would be taking care of the uh, children. Where, uh, at the time where the mother is working in the factory. Section 49 is regarding welfare officer which says if the number of workers is 500 or more there should be a welfare officer to look after the welfare of the uh, workers. Again he would be the employee of the organization and not the state uh, employee worker officer. Uh, welfare officer. So, in case the number is more than 500, the number of employees, then working uh, welfare officer shall be uh, employed in such a factory. Uh, so, basically, uh, let's see the summary of these wel uh, welfare provisions. Uh, crutches should be installed where the number of women workers exceeds 30. Restroom, shelters, and lunchroom facility where there are greater than 150 workmen. Uh, cool drinking water where there are 250 workers, uh, canteen where there are more than 250 workers, ambulance room, doctors, nurses, dressing uh, and compounder where there are more than 500 workers and welfare officer where there are greater than 500 workers and lady welfare officer where uh, the number of women exceeds the number of men. So, there is majority. Now, uh, regarding uh, working hours, there are certain provisions uh, are uh, laid down for the working hours also because when someone works for a long period of time that may be uh, n not good for their health. So, certain provisions are laid. The rules uh, uh, as to the regulation of the number of hours of the adult workers uh, which says uh, under section 51 uh, weekly hours uh, should not be more than 48 hours a week working hours that is. Uh, section 52 says the first day of the week that is Sunday shall be a weekly holiday and section 53 says uh, there should be compensatory holidays given to the workers and where a weekly holiday is denied he shall be allowed to avail the con compensatory holiday within a month. Uh, section 54 under working hours says that daily working hours 
नो अडल्ट वर्कर शेल बी अलाउड टू वर्क इन अ फैक्ट्री फॉर मोर देन नाइन आवर्स इन अ वन डे सेक्शन फिफ्टी फाइव से इंटरवल फॉर रेस्ट विच से नो एम्प्लॉय वर्कर शेल वर्क फॉर मोर देन फाइव आवर्स बिफोर he has had an uh, interval for rest of at least half an hour so he cannot work continuously over a five year uh, hours of time unless he takes a break then inspector may increase it up to 6 hours however the minimum requirement uh, of hours before he can take a rest <coughs> then section 56 is regarding spread over uh, which says inclusive of rest intervals uh, they shall not be uh, spread over more than 10 and a half hours in any particular day and inspector however may increase the spread over up to 12 hours. Section 57 uh, regarding night shifts in factories where employees are uh, required to work in the night. It says if shifts exceed beyond the midnight a holiday for him will mean a period of 24 hours beginning when his shift ends. Then prohibition uh, overlapping shifts uh, under section 58 says work shall not be carried on uh, in any factory by means of systems of shifts uh, so arranged that uh, more than one uh, relay of workers is engaged in the work of the same kind at the same time. <coughs> then section 59 uh, is regarding extra wages for overtime which says if workers work for more than 9 hours a day or more than 48 hours a day, extra wages should be given. Wages at twice the ordinary rate. So basically, in case the employer makes the employee works more than the uh, minimum uh, or the maximum uh, number of hours laid down by the uh, act, then uh, he would be paid at the rate of twice the normal wage rate for those extra working hours. Then section 60 is regarding restrictions on uh, double employment which says no employee uh, is allowed to work in any factory on any day uh, on which he has already been working in any other factory. Uh, section 61 uh, is regarding notice of periods of work for adult workers which says notice to be displayed uh, at some uh, conspicuous place. Uh, periods to be fixed beforehand and classifications of uh, workers groups should be there and copy of notice in duplicate and uh, any change to the uh, to be sent to the inspector for the approval so so far we have covered certain sections regarding the health safety and the welfare uh, certain other provisions are left uh, however from these provisions of factories act 1948 we can see that uh, central government laid down certain minimum requirements for all the factories uh, under the manufacturing process to meet. However, the state government may uh, increase these requirements or modify these requirements according to the conditions of the uh, state. Uh, other provisions uh, we would be covering in our uh, next sec section of this uh, series. Thank you. With this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us a productive session on uh, labor welfare. Uh, so, sir, we would just want to know uh, if we are talking about the organizations uh, uh, which work with the uh, thousands of the employees. So, uh, do we have a facility or protocols to uh, change the desired, uh, I, I should say, the protocols from time to time according to the needs of the employees? Uh, these requirements may be first of all these requirements uh, as laid down by this uh, factories act 1948 those minimum requirements have, have to be met by any organization which falls under the definitions of the factories or the manufacturing organization uh, yes the organization is empowered to modify them however modify in the way that the minimum requirements are met it can establish any other over and above uh, requirements uh, to that minimum requirement and the state government is also empowered to lay down so, in uh, real life scenario, what happens is that usually these minimum requirements are met. These are not very difficult requirements to be met. Uh, over and above these, the state government sets certain requirements. Uh, and even over and above that, certain uh, factories, uh, they put their own requirement. So, yes, they are allowed to modify. However, the minimum requirement should be met. 
Definitely the minimum requirement is required to be met as uh, said by Mr. Amok Talan in the lecture uh, itself. So what else are we going to cover in the future sessions? Uh, future sections we are going to cover uh, certain uh, uh, sections regarding the welfare which were left out in this section. Uh, then uh, the relation of this act with the other acts laid down by the government, how certain provisions which may be, contra uh, which may be like contrary to one another, uh, how the organization is supposed to settle, which provision is it supposed to follow. Uh, so these are the situations that we are going to cover. In case if uh, any company or any organization doesn't follow uh, the uh, mentioned uh, sections or the uh, mentioned laws or the protocols, uh, can uh, an employee has power to take action or uh, can um, uh, knock the doors of the laws? Yes, employee can, any employee who's been uh, either mistreated or has not been given these uh, particular facilities and uh, first of all, uh, the according to the procedure, he's supposed to go through go through the proper grievance procedure and go to the manager of that particular organization. In case his uh, complaint is not registered or he's not uh, satisfied with the results of the uh, of the uh, given by the manager, he can go to the inspector, which is the uh, uh, governed by under the district magistrate of that particular district. So he can go there and then uh, according to this proper, proper procedure of the law, the uh, inspector can take required action against the factory managers. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us a productive session on labor welfare. And dear friends, as Mr. Amuk Talan himself said, that uh, we are going to talk more uh, on this particular topic and we are going to cover more sections in the forthcoming lecture. Till then, dear friends, do write to us at info.cec at nic.in if you have uh, learned something and if you have any queries which you like to be answered. Uh, your suggestions and feedbacks are also important for us. Sir. So, so keep writing us at info.cc at nic.in. The lecture is going to be uploaded on YouTube soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.